mathematicians. This video is for those mathematicians that are not in class today because maybe you're at NHD or you're at a rowing regatta or for some other reason. Um, in class today, we're really going to be focusing on quadratic application problems, specifically focusing on those related to area. We're going to walk through two problems together and then you're going to practice solving some other problems on your own. You have a link to the handout, so either open up that handout so you can follow along or print it out. If you've printed out, you can work on the handout itself, otherwise work in your math journal. All right, let's get started. Whenever you have an application problem, it's always great just to kind of read it really carefully and highlight key information along the way. All right, so a school is fencing a rectangular area for a playground. It plans to enclose the playground using fencing on three sides, interesting, and an existing wall for the fourth side. So there'll be a wall and then the fencing will go around it. The school has budgeted enough money for 75 feet of fencing and they want the playground to have an area of about 450 feet squared. For these problems, the first thing is to always, always, always draw a diagram. So here's the wall of the building. And here is the wall, then the fencing for the playground. So the fencing is going to come on three sides of that. So three areas, I'm sorry, three side lengths for that. And let's maybe define a few variables. I'm going to let this be the width. Excuse me. And then I know I also need a length. So I'm going to let L be the length of the playground itself. All right, so now that we have variables, let's use the information we have um, both about area and about perimeter to start describing um, and writing some equations. I'm going to first think about the perimeter. And for the perimeter, we know we're going to go around the fencing. So we're going to have a width plus a length plus a width. And all together, we have 75 feet of fencing. So that perimeter is going to equal 75. I can simplify that to two W's plus an L is equal to 75. And there is an equation that describes what I know about perimeter. Let's do the same thing to describe what we know about area. And for this case, we know that area is length times width, and that's going to have to equal 450 um, feet squared. So this is really interesting because now I had two constraints. So I have two equations, and both of these equations are using the same variables, width and length. So I have a system of equations. Do you remember we did systems of equations last semester? Now, one strategy I have for systems of equations is I can use substitution. And that's what I'm going to do here. And what I'm going to do is come and isolate L. I'm going to get L all by itself. And to do that, I'm going to subtract 2W from both sides. And I know that L is equal to negative 2W plus 75. And I, I um, isolated L because it was the easiest thing to do. And what I can do now is I can come up to the L in my area equation and substitute in this equivalent expression instead. So now I have negative 2w plus 75, the length, times the width, and that's equal to 450. Now why in the world would I ever want to do that? And the reason was now we've gone from a system of two equations with two unknowns to one equation with one unknown. And that's something we can solve. So let's come down that we've done the substitution. Let's solve this equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify the left side of that equation by distributing my multiplication times w. So I have negative 2w, oopsie, that's not a 2, negative 2w times w, negative 2w squared plus 75 w, and that's equal to 450. I know I can't use the square root method to solve this because I have w in two places, so I'm going to see if I can factor it. So I'm going to set one side equal to 0 by subtracting 450 from both sides. And then the next thing I'm going to do, it's always so much easier 
if my a value is a positive number. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. Multiply both sides by negative 1. And that's going to switch the sign of all of my terms. So negative 2w squared times negative 1 will give me positive 2w squared minus 75w plus 450 equals 0. All right, so I'm here. I'm going to just quickly see if I can factor it. All right, I know it has to equal 900 product. Oh, sorry, two numbers that multiply to 900 add to negative 75. Now, you can try some different techniques. I know 900, I'm going to do the prime factorization. That's 9 times 100. 100 is 10 times 10. So that's 10 times 10 times 9. And sometimes you can just kind of play around and see if you can find um, the two numbers. I spend about like 15 seconds. If you can find them, great. If not, use the quadratic formula. And we're all set up to use the quadratic formula if we need to. Now I happen just to know that those two numbers are negative 60 and negative 15. So again, if you can find them, great. Otherwise, use a quadratic formula. So at this point, I'm just going to solve it by factoring. If you want, pause me, try using the quadratic formula and use a mechanical calculator for sure. And then let's see if we get to the um, same place with that. All right, so I'm going to factor this by splitting the middle term, 2w squared minus 60w minus 15w plus 450. Factor by grouping. I'm going to factor out the GCF of 2w, w minus 30. And then here I'm going to subtract out the GCF of 15, minus 15, w minus 30 again. And now my GCF, w minus 30. And now I factored it. Okay, once it's factored, now I can use the ZPP, zero product property. This means either W minus 30 is equal to zero, in which case W is equal to 30, the width is 30, or 2W minus 15 is equal to zero, and 2W is equal to 15, or W is equal to 15 halves. Now here's an example where I'm always like, keep it as a fraction, keep it as a fraction, keep it as a fraction. When we're in a real world problem, it's probably best to keep it now maybe as a decimal or as a mixed number. And I'm just going to write this then as seven and a half. All right, so we have two possibilities. Let's go back and think. Two possibilities for this playground. And for this playground, one possibility, here's the wall, is for our widths to be 30. And the other possibility is for our widths to be 7.5. Now hold on, I'm going to grab something. I want to get my calculator. When do, using um, when solving these problems, always feel free to use a mechanical calculator for this. All right, so notice I still have a missing piece of what is the length for these. And if I come up here, I see, oh, yeah, 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 I remember. To find the length, it's really another way of thinking about this is 75 minus twice the width. So the length is equal to 75 minus twice the width. So the length is equal to 15. Or over here, the length is equal to 75 minus twice the width. And so the length is equal to, what is that, 60. So the school has two choices. Both of these choices use 75 feet in fencing and have an area of 450 feet squared. So consider if you were designing this, would you want this playground that was 30 by 15? Or would you want a playground that was sort of skinny, only about seven and a half feet long, but I mean, sorry, wide, but really long? And I think most people, what was your choice? I think most would maybe go with this configuration for that. All right, I'm going to do this in two different videos just so it lets you um, take a break. So we're going to come back in a minute and work um, the second problem. So just make sure you feel comfortable with this problem and you have it in your notes, in your math journal, or on the handout. And I'll see you again in just a second.